All right, we are going to be going over functions in functional notation. We went over this a little bit um, in 1.1, talking about what a function was, we talked about uh, f sub x and all that stuff. Um, but today we're going to talk a little bit more about it. So at the end, you can evaluate a function for a specific input value for a domain, for a domain. Uh, and we're going to go over a little bit more of uh, what a domain and a range is. Uh, we'll start doing that. Okay. Um, so if I have a coordinate plane, you know, just a piece of one, kind of like this, kind of like this like that, right? And I have an X and a Y. And we'll say I have a function that looks something like, like that, okay? Uh, let's pretend that this is, uh, that's, not, that's, not a good, that's not a great function because it overlaps. It's not actually a function. Let's make it more, more like that, okay? So let's say that's my function. It's a crazy function, right? Um, the domain is all real numbers. from here to here, the x value. That is the domain is my x values, okay? My range is my y value numbers from here to here. That is my range, right? So my, my domain, for this thing I just kind of through together here would be, um, let's see, it would be negative two to positive three. Negative two to how about a three? Right, and there, uh, I don't know why I wrote it like that. Negative two to comp positive three, and inclusively, including those ones, right? And then my range. It includes, let's see, it goes up to like, I'll say it's like one, well, let's start, it goes like one point, let's say two to like negative 1.2 to negative, negative 1.2. That's my range. Okay, that's domain and range. Okay. The thing about a function, you know, you know, may have noticed how I erased it so that it didn't like overlap back on itself in the uh, y direction, right? A, a function cannot have an output where you have two y values for any input that is x. So that's a lot of words. So what does that mean? Okay, so specifically the what they define a function as is, let's see, let me scroll down and read it verbatim. Um, a function is a mathematical relationship for each element in the domain, the domain, for so for any number in the domain, it has exactly, exactly one output in the range, right? So I made a drawing like this. This is my this is my function, right? And I have one input from my domain in, and I have exactly one output from my range out. Okay, so I have one x in, and I have one y out. Okay, and this is my f sub x. My fun this is and this is f sub x okay um, so I what I can't have is like uh, let me find another color here We're out of colors uh, I had a blue one right here's a pencil I'll make a pencil what so let's say I have a pencil like this and I have like right let's say I have a uh, I'm trying to say that this is a function. We'll call this f of p for pencil. f of p for pencil, and then my domain allegedly would be from like from here to my max and my min, right? It would be my domain, um, and my range would be from 
from like here to here. Oh, sorry, this is my, my range. Sorry, my range would be from here to here. So my range for my pencil would be like three to negative one half, three to negative one half. And my domain would be from here to here. My domain would be like uh, one, two, three and a half, negative three and three and one half, and my uh, two all the way to three. Right, that would be my domain and range for this this p function. Right. So what would happen if I said my x value was I don't know negative one. X was negative one, and then my function p would spit out this number and that number. It would spit out. Well, this would be like one, one, two, three. It would spit out three, and it would spit out uh, like one and a half, one and one half, right? Well, by definition, not a function, right? Because there's two outputs for p for that, right? So not a function. Again, it's a math math. This is in your books, and it's on the board, and it should make it in your notes. This is a mathematical relationship for each element in the domain corresponds to exactly one element in the range. Exactly one element in the range. You get you put one x in, you get exactly one y out. Okay? So that is the whole function thing. All right, let's uh, move on to some more examples. Okay, so I prepared the following lines, linear functions. You can see that um, these are all lines and they go on forever, so their range and domain are infinite, from infinity to negative infinity. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and derive the equations um, for each one of these. I have function f sub, f sub g, function green, function red, f sub r, and function o of f sub orange. Let's do function green first. And this may be a refresher um, for you. It may be brand new for you. This is the point intercept form. It's a function. It's a linear function. Why? y being f sub whatever line, right, equals m, which is the slope, like how slanty the line is, times your x. x is your input, right? And then b is your y-intercept. That is, wherever this line, wherever your function crosses the y-intercept. Okay, so here we go with function g, right? So it's going to be, instead of placing y in there, I'm going to say function f sub g, so function g equals, well, where does, I'm going to do the low-hanging fruit first. Where does it, I got an x value, okay? x is always going to be there. What is my b value? Well, looks like b, looks like this intersects at y equals 2, right? So it's going to be plus 2. So what is my m value here? Well, I have to figure out what my change in y or my change in x is. All right, so just by looking at this, I, can, I know this is going to be negative. It's going to be sloping down, right? So I, I have to keep that in mind, right? So my change in y from here to here Right, I point. I noted these points. It changes one. Right, so my change in y is going to be one. Right, and then, but it goes down. It goes down one. So it's going to be negative one. Right, and then my change in x from here to here is two. Right, so it is my is negative 
1 half 2x. Or you can rewrite this as negative 1 half x. Or you could write this as negative x divided by 2. You could write it like that if you wanted to. Or you could write it as, nope, we'll keep it like that. We'll keep it like that, make it easy. Um, we can even move this down here. Negative x divided by 2 plus 2. Okay, so that is that is the f's of g. Okay, um, now let's do uh, f sub r. So f sub r equals. All right. Well, my is going to be equal to. Um, well, it's going to be x. Okay. Um, and it's going to be, what is my y-intercept? be plus 1. And now what's my slope? My slope. All right, well, it starts. Here's an intercept. Here's an intercept. It's going to be negative. Negative. And it changes. It, change, it changes 4. It changes 4x. X values. So my change in x was 4 over 1 r, 1 r, right? So this equals negative, okay, pretty similar, right? So this is a bigger number than that. So this is a more negative slope than that. Uh, so that's a good one. So here, we, now we have a positive slope one. F sub zero, or sorry, F sub O for orange. F sub orange, not to be excuse, not to be mistaken for F sub zero. Okay, F sub orange, right? So what is my y-intercept? Okay, I know this is gonna be positive, so I don't have to write a plus sign, but my, I'm gonna have a x in there somewhere, right before my y-intercept, my y-intercepts at negative, negative, one, two, three, four, five. The intercepts at negative five. That's pretty cool. But what is my slope? Okay, so for every, let's see, my chain, from here to here, it chain, it went up three y. Y is on top, three, it went up three y, so positive three y, for every positive one change in x, right? So this can be rewritten as 3x minus 5, okay? So that is how you write that one. So I hope that makes some sense. And then sometimes they're not gonna give you a graph. Sometimes it's, gonna, it's just gonna say, hey, f sub x equals x squared plus 5x minus 12. All right, and they say, hey, um, find the value of f sub 2, right? So it's not that hard. Okay, you just take this, take your twos, and everywhere there's an x, you put 2, right? So you're gonna take a 2, and you're gonna go 2, Whoops, that's gonna, I started making an X there. So this is going to be equals, equals 2 squared plus 5. This is going to be times 2. That's 12. All right. So remember this 5X is just a, a five welded to the x value with multiplication. Okay, so two squared is four. Five times two is 10 minus 12. So this is gonna be 14 minus 12, which is f sub x equals two, which is pretty simple here. All right, and then finally, we'll say we have a, 
we have a function here and they're like, hey, what if f sub x, they don't give you any of this. They don't give you any of that, right? And they say, um, what, they give you a, a graph like, here's function f sub p. f sub p does this. Right, this is f sub p. And it's like, okay, here is a point. Uh, and this point value is, x value is, uh, let's see, it's one, two, three, one, two, three, four. And y is one, two, three, four. So this is like 3.8. And they're like, hey, and this is point p. Or point A. It's point A. They're like, hey, um, what is F sub 4? Right? Well, you got, well, if F, if F sub 4 is, you know, if you put in 4 into this function, it yields 3.8. It equals 3.8 because that's what a function is. Okay, they might give it to you in table form. Right, if uh, x is a certain value, y is a certain value, and uh, they're like, okay, is is this a function? And it's like two, six, negative three, and two. Oh uh, no, no, let's not do two. Uh, five, and it's like it's like a two, six, um, five, and two. Um, is this a function? Well. Uh, Remember, uh, these have to have one output, one input for individual outputs, right? So different, 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 okay? This is a different y output, that's a different y output, that's a different y output, but wait, we have two of the same outputs for two different inputs. So no, this is not a function. If this, for instance, was, however, three, right, then yes, that would be a function. I just made some numbers up. Who knows what that would look like, right? But um, that's all the different things you're going to see out of this chapter or this section. It's pretty straightforward. If you have any questions, please let me know.